Aparna, your maths master teacher, right? So welcome to the session, everyone. Your captain is here, guys, again, in order to boom his whole chapter in one go. All right. So if anybody is having any doubt left regarding this chapter, so this session is definitely for you guys. So this session is one short revision for the chapter rational numbers. All right. So are you guys excited to boom this? chapter in one go yes so come along with me so let's revise what was rational number whom do we call rational numbers so rational numbers are those numbers which are in the form of p by q p by q means they are in basically ratio that p is to q and where we know that p are always integers p and q are integers and here the q which is in denominator should never be equal to zero should never be equal to zero all right so two conditions are here one that p and q are integers second uh, rule is that q should not be equal to zero all right so example of rational numbers are 16 minus 8 1 by 2 this decimal number 3.56 1.3 minus 3 by 4 correct so some of you again must be wondering ma'am why 16 ma'am 16 is not in the form of p by q beta this is in the form of p by q how because we can write it in the form of p by q how 16 by 1 it is in the form of p by q any number any number take any number that has definitely a denominator 1 correct all right very good and this is also in the form of p by q how 1.33333 and so on can be written as like this and so on right this can be written as like this 356 upon 100 just convert it in the form of p by q guys understood everybody very good very good so in short integers are those numbers which covers all the whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, decimals, fractions, in short, every numbers. Correct? Alright. So, we have classified rational number for you guys. See here. Come on, come on, everybody. See quickly. Can you see the smallest circle which is of whole number which includes 0 and all the natural numbers, right? Then, more bigger circle is of integers, right? So, now integers include also whole numbers, but also integers have negative numbers and rational number is the bigger circle, which includes integers as well as whole numbers and natural numbers also. And what next? Decimals, fractions, negative of decimals, every number in short. Alright, now let's, let's just quickly revise what were the properties of rational numbers. Now, all of you guys tell me closure property, associative property, commutative property and distributive property. Now, let's quickly see one by one. So, in closure property, in addition, it holds true. When we say that it holds true, it means that when you add two rational numbers to each other, you are going to get a rational number again. That means rational number plus rational number is equal to rational number. That is why it is holding true here in closure property. Now in subtraction, see guys, when you subtract one rational number to the another rational number, you get a rational number. So it is a yes, correct? Now in multiplication, you definitely get a rational number when you multiply one rational number to another. Yes, so this is also holding true. In case of division, it is definitely not sure that it is going to be a rational number. How? Normally we get a rational number when we divide a rational number to rational number. But it also happens the case when you divide a number with zero. Correct? When you are doing this case, then it happens to be not defined. Why? Because any number guys, any number divided by 0, any number divided by 0 is equal to what? Not defined. 
let's say 15 divided by 0 is not defined you cannot define it that is why it is not true in case of division all right so in case of addition done subtraction done multiplication done not in case of division all right guys let's move to commutative property so let's first talk about addition first case so in addition it definitely holds true why in commutative property we just change the order of the numbers and see if the answer is same then we can say that it is holding true in case of addition when you add a rational number 1 to another rational number 2 okay r1 plus r2 should be equal to a rational number okay now just change the order now r2 comes first r2 plus r1 now if the answer is same then it is holding true so in case of addition commutative property holds true in rational numbers okay now let's talk about subtraction let's take two rational numbers now do the same thing r1 minus r2 here and then r2 minus r1 see if the answer is same here we got 1 by 3 and here we got minus of 1 by 3 are they same are they same no why because it is of positive 1 and it is of negative 1 by 3 so it is not true in case of subtraction when you are applying commutative property clear so always remember that now let's talk about multiplication in rational number about commutative property let's do one thing quickly r1 multiplied by r2 r1 multiplied by r2 is equal to minus 2 here now just do r2 multiplied by r1 change the order if you got same answer then it is holding true is it same yes minus 2 is equal to minus 2 then it is holding true now let's talk about division guys it is similar like that only see just r1 divided by r2 you got 2 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 1 because when you have to just change the division sign you just multiply you just multiply and do the reciprocal of that number so 1 by 3 ka reciprocal is 3 by 1 so answer is 2 here correct now just make it r2 divided by r1 right commutative property so the answer is 1 by 2 so are they same tell me no yes so ho gaya na nahi so this is not true in case of division when you are applying commutative property understood everybody very good let's talk about third property associative property associativity is when you just change the bracket just yahan se uthaya bracket yahan rakh diya matlab humne kya trick yaad kari thi associative property ke liye friends wali right do you remember grouping yes so yahan par can you see 5 is alone and these two are friends 6 plus 2 by 3 so answer was 35 by 3 and when 5 plus 6 became friend and it is alone then also the answer is same you have just shifted the bracket from here to here correct nothing you have done other than this so answer is same then it is holding true yes so we can say that it is holding true associative property holds true in case of addition when you are dealing with rational numbers okay now talk about subtraction again change the bracket guys so we know that according to bodmas rule we just first solve brackets and then solve the outside things right so here we have 2 by 9 minus 4 by 9 minus 1 by 9 so these are these are the two rational numbers which are in bracket then solve these two you get 3 by 9 now 2 by 9 minus 3 by 9 is equal to minus 1 by 9 minus 1 by 9 correct now just change the bracket now these two are friends first solve the bracket whatever is inside the bracket so 2 by 9 minus 4 by 9 minus 1 by 9 solve these two you got minus 2 by 9 and this one minus 1 by 9 now solve this minus 2 by 9 minus 1 by 9 minus 3 by 9 so are they same are the both the answers same no that is why it does not hold true in case of subtraction when you are dealing with rational numbers okay now let's talk about multiplication now if you are going to deal with multiplication in rational numbers see here 
if you change the brackets answer is going to be same answer is going to be the same so it is holding true in case of multiplication for associativity correct in division guys same like that also here it does not hold true why because answer does not came same can you see yes so it does not hold true in case of division correct everybody understood all right so you have boomed till property of rational number now let's move ahead so guys let's move to another property distributive property so under distributive property you are just going to what do distribute the number like for example you have number a b c so it can be written as a multiplied by bracket mein b plus c so it means that a is in multiplication with b also and it's c also so a b a b plus a c correct understood everybody very good so before i move further i want to show you really really important announcement to you all so at vedantu we are offering you pro subscription life plan in this you have to just go on to the description box uh, there is a link go on to that link select your grade for example you are in class 8 click on that and in which class you are selecting you are just targeting that click on that all right and then you are going to get a discount of 4000 rupees plan you are going to get it for 2699 and you have to apply the code at pro at pro and you will get it for discounted offer okay guys try it for one month and you are going to love vedantu i'm sure okay so like guys let's move ahead to our next property all right so we have studied about additive inverse yes so additive inverse of any number means just change the sign just do the inverse or just put the opposite sign of that number for example additive inverse of minus 3 by 2 would be the opposite sign of that number the plus of 3 by 2 that is it and additive identity means when you are going to get zero zero by adding those two numbers the inverse of that number and that number if you get zero then that is additive identity okay now let's talk about additive multiplicative inverse or reciprocal we know the reciprocal of any number it means just do it for example i have to find out the reciprocal of 3 so reciprocal of 3 would be 1 by 3 perfect yes so 2 by 3 reciprocal would be 3 by 2 and if you get one as the answer definitely you are going to get one now so 3 by so 3 kya 2 se 2 gaya so you get one as the answer right so this is a multiplicative identity correct so if you get the same number if you multiply with one or one se aap same number ko multiply karte ho if you get same that number only then this is multiplicative identity or property understood everybody yes all right now let's talk about when we multiply any number with zero so when you multiply any number with zero you are going to get zero yes guys if you multiply any number with zero can you see here 0 into 1 0 0 into 4 0 0 into 7 0 and so on any number multiplied with zero is equal to zero correct now let's talk about division by zero or divide zero by any number it means that if you divide any number let's say 2 by 0 we are not going to get the answer of it because it is not defined you can not define it guys i have repeatedly telling you that when any number is divided by zero it means it does not have any value or it can be said as infinity or it can be not defined correct and when you divide zero by any number any number it is means that you are going to get zero simple simple everybody means if you divide any number by zero you are going to get not defined if it is like this zero by one then it is known as zero correct so this is the basic difference okay correct all right now let's talk about rational number on number line what do we mean by rational number on number line it means we are just going to put the number on number line itself okay so when you are going to work towards the right 
right hand side then it means it is going towards the increasing numbers and when you walk towards left hand side it means that you are going to decrease the numbers value correct yes all right so let's just identify 4 by 7 on the number line it will be very 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 clear to you guys see here you have to point 4 by 7 on the number line so just quickly tell me guys is it going to lie between 0 and 1 0 and 1 just divide just divide 7 with 4 you are going to get 0 point something as the answer yes so it is definitely going to lie between 0 and 1 so just point 0 in one place and leave some space and put 1 on the number line okay now divide that particular portions between 0 to 1 into 7 equal parts what is in denominator 7 so divide that particular portion into 7 equal parts so 1 by 7 2 by 7 3 by 7 4 by 7 5 by 7 6 by 7 and 7 by 7 is nothing but one itself correct okay so you have to mark 4 by 7 so this particular point is known as 4 by 7 correct now let's suppose you have to mark 2 by 7 so this is going to be the point for 2 by 7 now suppose you have to mark 8 by 7 then make one more point here it will be 8 by 7 correct so simple right i know i know okay now let's just quickly solve few question which are frequently being asked in the examination so you have to check the commutative property for a and b when a is equal to 1 by 2 and b is equal to 3 by 4 okay so let's quickly do this yes let's do this okay so you are being given that a multiplied by b will be equal to b by a this right we know this this is a commutative property so let's quickly do that so 1 by 2 multiplied by 3 by 4 would be equal to 3 by 4 multiplied by 1 by 4 so in this operation we got 3 by 8 as the answer and in rhs we got 3 by 8 are the same are the same yes so hence this is commutativity okay now let's check let's check in case of addition in case of addition so 1 by 2 plus 3 by 4 can be equal to 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4 let's check let's check it yes so when we do this we got 5 by 4 yes we got 5 by 4 Yes, very good. And here also we get four, five by four as the answer. In RHS also we got five by four only. So it is verified. Yes, it is verified. So hence we can say that commutativity property holds true in case of addition and both in multiplication also. Let's do one more question. It is also really, really important question because it is being asked mostly in the MCQ type type of question, short answer type of question. Okay, so you have to find out what is the value of this box. Yes, these are the option given. First, check what is the here zero and here one. So between these two, how many parts it is being divided? One, two. Three, correct. So in denominator, definitely it has to be three. So it is one, and it is two by three. So this is two by three. Correct, everybody understood. And this is one by three. This is three by three. Correct, everybody understood. I hope everybody understood it, and I hope everybody has cleared and boomed all the concept of this chapter. Quickly hit the like button, guys! Come on, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for getting more and more these types of content. Okay? Now, this is the challenge for you guys. I want you guys to solve it. I will solve it in the next session at the 7 p.m. again. Come on, guys! You have to solve it. Boom it, guys! Boom it and give me the answer in the comment section. I'll wait for your answer. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Come on, guys! Do it for me. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for coming to the video. Bye, bye, guys, bye. We'll be coming back soon with more content. All right, bye.